Hello, I'm Carlos Seger from Illinois Institute of Technology. I'd like to talk about calculating the sample absorption and edge jumps for XFs. So the absorption event is the following. You have an incident intensity on a small slab DZ with an absorption coefficient mu. This is a linear absorption. And so if I want to calculate how much intensity is attenuated across this little slab DZ, I can write that uh, as di, which is the, uh, the change in the intensity, is minus i of z, which is the incident intensity on the slab dz, times the absorption coefficient times the thickness dz. This can be rewritten as di over i is equal to minus mu dz. Well, you can solve this differential equation by plane integration. If you integrate both sides, this is just the, uh, the integral, perfect integrand of uh, log, and this is mu times z. So you get log of i is equal to minus mu z plus some integration constant. Well, if I take the anti-log of both sides, I get i is equal to e to the c, that's from this one, times e to the minus mu z, that's from this term. You can uh, separate the added exponents by multiplying the exponentials. <clears throat> and that then turns into a constant, which we'll call a, times e to the minus mu z. Now, if you have an intensity that you know at z equals zero, so i zero, then you can realize that the boundary, this boundary condition sets a equal to i zero. So when, mu, when z is zero, your intensity is i zero, as you expect. This is just Beer's law with an absorption coefficient mu, which depends on x-ray parameters. So we're interested in calculating mu and, of course, z. For an elemental material, the absorption coefficient mu is just the product of the atomic density, rho sub a, times the atomic absorption cross-section, sigma sub a. So mu is equal to sigma to rho a sigma a. If we rewrite this in terms of the mass density, rho sub m, which is the atomic mass, and the atomic mass m sub a, and Avogadro's number n sub a, you can get the absorption coefficient to be this. It's rho sub m, which is the uh, mass density, times n sub a, divided by m sub a, times sigma sub a. So if the absorber is made up of, of different atoms, you can generalize this calculation. Uh, and you can write that mu is equal to the sum over j, the jth type of atom of the density, the atomic density of that jth atom, times sigma of sub a of the jth atom. Where rho sub aj and sigma sub aj are just the atomic density and atomic cross-section, absorption cross-section of each of the components of this multiple atom component system. So mu, which is has units of inverse centimeters, is called the linear absorption coefficient. Uh, you can use this to d define what the mass absorption coefficient is, mu sub m, which is centimeters squared per gram. So basically, it's mu sub m divided by, or uh, divided by the density of the material. This is the mass density of the material. So mu sub m is equal to the absorption coefficient, the linear absorption coefficient, divided by the mass density. If you now rewrite Beer's law in terms of this, you get that instead of i sub zero e to the minus mu z, you have i sub zero e to the minus mu sub m times the mass density, rho, times z. So suppose we want to compute the absorption coefficient per unit mass of a compound if we distribute it over an area A. This is typically what you do if you're making a pellet um, out of a powder material. You know what the powdered material is, you know what its composition is, and you want to spread it over a pellet of a certain area uh, by incorporating some buffer material. 
If the compound's made up of X sub J atoms with atomic mass M sub J, and has a molecular mass M sub C and density, mass density, rho sub M, rho, rho we can write the following, that the uh, molecular mass is just the atomic concentration or the number of atoms with atomic mass M sub J times M sub J, the fractional amount. And so mu sub M then is going to be simply Avogadro's number divided by the mass of the compound times x sub j times sigma a sub j, because that is the uh, composite uh, absorption coefficient of this material. Instead of rho, we've replaced it by the mass density rho sub m for that material. The atomic, uh, I mean the atomic rho, uh, density. The thickness of a mass m of the compound distributed over this area a can then be written as um, z right this is the x-ray thickness divided of which is the mass of the material divided by the mass density times uh, the area and so this leads to absorption per unit mass mu sub m over a and Beer's law in the pellet, right, over the area. And Beer's law then can be rewritten as the following. I is equal to I sub zero, e to the minus mu sub m over A times m. So now you've replaced the thickness, z, by something that's related to the mass of the material and the area of the sample over which you've spread it. So let's do an example for that. Let's take absorption of iron um, 203, Fe203, which is hematite, at 5 kilovolts. So, typically, the, the tabulated cross-sections are not atomic cross-sections, but mass cross-sections. And so, that's what you'll find in most tables. So, sigma j is equal to, this is the mass cross-section, is equal to N, the Avogadro's number, times the atomic cross-section divided by m sub j, which is the mass of that component. So we can rewrite this quantity here uh, with mu sub m, which was written as x sub j times sigma aj, sum of that over j divided times the Avogadro's number divided by the mass of the compound. We now have to replace sigma sub aj with sigma j, because that's what we can get from the tabulated values. And so if we do that, we get inside the sum m sub j over n sub a. The n sub a's are constants, they cancel. And so this gives me one over the mass of the compound times the sum over j of each of the components of the compound, the elemental components of the compound, uh, the mass, atomic mass of that element times the fractional amount of that element times the um, mass cross-section for that element. So let's look up in tables, and these can be through Hephaestus, or it can be MuCal on the web, or anything you like, um, any uh, other software that you like that has the tabulated values. You can get the atomic masses and cross and um, atomic masses, the density, uh, for the iron materials. We'll start with the Fe203, which has a density of 5.24 grams per centimeter cubed. The mass of iron is 55.895 grams per mole. The mass of oxygen is 16 grams per mole. <clears throat> the mass of the compound, Fe203, for one formula unit is 159.69 grams per mole. And we can now uh, begin by finding the tabulated values of the cross sections for the elements iron and oxygen at 5 kilovolts. So, sigma for iron is 138.86 uh, centimeters squared per gram. This can be either the total cross section or the photoelectric cross section. You can use either uh, as an estimate. Sigma sub zero, uh, O rather, the oxygen cross section is 46.666 
centimeter squared per gram. So if you assume a five millimeter pellet, the area is pi r squared, <coughs> which is about 0.2 uh, centimeters squared. And the, uh, the absorption coefficient, the mass absorption coefficient then, as we have up here, is just a sum divided by the mass of the compound. So you have 1 over 159.69. Then you have two irons times the uh, atomic mass times the cross-section and three oxygen times the mass times the cross-section. And when you put that all together, you get 111.23 times the centimeter squared per gram. So that's mu sub m. Well, mu sub m divided by the area is equal to 566.7 5, uh, gra inverse grams. And the absorption coefficient uh, is equal to mu sub m times rho, which is 582.9 inverse centimeters. And that means that the absorption length, 1 over mu, is about 17.2 microns. So <clears throat> if you have a particle that's 17.2 that's microns in, in thickness, it'll absorb one absorption length, e to the 1, minus 1 rather. So this is how you calculate the absolute absorption. What about the absorption edge jump? Uh, that's an important quantity when you're trying to make a pellet to have an absorption edge jump. But you also need to know what your total absorption cross-section is because sometimes the absorption cross-section is so big that you, you can't really make a pellet with the right edge jump and you have to go to fluorescence. So let's calculate the edge jump of a pellet. If we want to calculate uh, a pellet containing Fe2O3, which has an edge jump of delta mu times z of 1 at the iron edge, which is 700, uh, 7,112 eV, we'll start by computing the absorption cross-sections, mu sub m, above and below the edge of interest. So usually I go about 10 eV either way, so we'll start at 7,100 eV and 7,120 eV. And we I have here a table of energies. Uh, the absorption cross-section we just used now before to calculate the absorption uh, at 5,000 eV, and then the two uh, energies of interest. So for iron, remember we had 138.86 sigma uh, centimeters squared per gram. At 7,100, it's dropped uh, by uh, as a function of e to the minus 3. The energy is minus 3, and it's 50.52 grams a centimeter squared per gram. And then above the edge, it's gone, it jumps up because there's more absorption to 404.78 centimeters squared per gram. For oxygen, you start at 46.67 at 5,000. It drops to about 15.65 centimeters squared per gram at 7,100, and it doesn't change much across the edge because there's no additional absorption through the oxygen edge. So these are approximately equal. So I can now calculate the mass absorption coefficient uh, at all these three energies. Well, we had 111.23 centimeters squared per gram before. For uh, at 7,100, we have 40.07 centimeters squared per gram. And at 7,120, we have 288.03 centimeters squared per gram. Now, if we want to calculate the edge jump, it's a delta mu. So we take the, the absorption, uh, mass absorption above times the mass divided by the area minus the mass absorption below the edge times the mass divided by the area. So these two are constants. So we're left with delta mu. That's what we're interested in. And, and that we want to set equal to 1. So if we want to get 1, the question is we know the area. We know the absorption coefficients. What is the mass? And we can solve for the mass just by factoring out. So the mass then is equal to the area of the pellet divided by the mass absorption above minus the mass absorption below the edge. And we have all those quantities here, and we can calculate that. So it's 0 0.2, 0 0.1963, uh, that's the area in centimeters squared. And down here we have 288 minus 40. And that gives me 
0.0008 or 0.8 milligrams is what you need to get an edge jump of about one. That's not a lot of material and that's typical.